Hey guys, welcome to another video in our Path Integral series. In today's video, we will be finishing up our derivation for the Path Integral. So in the last video, we derived this expression for the probability amplitude that a particle travels from A to B in time t. And we called the expression the Path Integral. So all we have to do is just solve this big old expression to find that prob probability amplitude. Now in the last video, I actually wrote n equals zero on top of the pi symbol here. I shouldn't have wrote n equals zero because that makes no sense, right? That was a mistake. It should be n minus one on top of the, of the pi symbol, meaning that we are multiplying the dqs um, up to n minus one, starting at j equals zero. Sorry, starting at j equals one for this one, and then j equals zero for this one. So with that said, here is the form for the path integral. And what we want to do is make this expression much more easier to work with, because it's pretty big right now. And what we can actually do is we can just integrate over the momentum. And doing that will simplify this equation a lot. So let's actually do that. So what we, what, we, what we have to first do is distribute this delta inside. So doing that, let's just copy this. Copy, let's paste it. So what, what we have to do is distribute or delta inside. So doing that gives us this. Now what we can do is we can remember that we have we had an expression. We had an expression of qj plus one minus qj over delta. We had that term in there right over here. And delta is, is a time slice. It's defined as t over n. So as n approaches infinity, this delta approaches zero. This makes the expression qj plus one minus qj over delta become a derivative q dot, where q dot is defined as dq over dt. So this expression becomes just the time derivative of q, right? So since qj plus one minus minus qj over delta is dq over dt, or just q dot, and the limit as n approaches infinity, this just means that we can write qj plus one minus qj as just q dot times delta, right? All we, all we do is just multiply both sides by this delta over here. So let's rewrite it. So we now get this by just rewriting qj plus one minus qj as q dot times delta. As we can see, it makes this expression much more nicer to see. So what can we do now to integrate over the momenta? Well, first of all, we are only integrating over the momenta, right? So we don't have to actually consider the integral over position right now. All we have to look at is this integral. Now to integrate this, we can use what's called the Gaussian integral for a quadratic function. So here is the Gaussian integral, and it's equal to this. So right now, this expression that we see here doesn't look exactly in the form of a Gaussian integral, right? You don't have any p squared term. And also, Gaussian integral doesn't have any 1 over 2 pi term. So what we can do here is just move the 2 pi, the 1 over 2 pi to the front to give us 1 over 2 pi times this integral that you see over here. So how can we introduce a p squared term in this integral to make us just use the solution for the Gaussian integral? Well, the answer lies within the Hamiltonian. 
So remember that the Hamiltonian is just P squared divided by 2M minus V, right? But there's no V term in this Gaussian integral. So let's look for the, let's work in the case of a free particle and set V of X to zero. So that means our Hamiltonian is just P squared over 2M. When we plug in the Hamiltonian, we get this. So here is our simplified path integral for the momentum. So we can see that the P squared term is on the left hand side. So, so all we can do is just move this P, this minus P squared term to the left. And we are allowed to do this since addition just commutes, right? It doesn't matter which one, which one we actually just do first. So doing that gives us this over here. So it's looking pretty similar to this Gaussian integral over here. So let's actually pair up some terms together. So we can see that, that this P squared over here, sorry, it should really be PJ. Can't forget to write the, that J there. But we can see that this P squared term pretty much matches up with this p squared over here, and then this pj term matches up with the p over here. So since those align, we can just do do's, but the constants a and b have to be. But first we have to move this i term into our brackets, since we do have i's over here. So we can now deduce what a and b have to be. All right, and let's just remove the one over two pi term as well. So let's actually look inside these brackets. Inside the brackets, we have minus i pj squared over two m delta plus i pj q dot delta. And inside here, we have, let me write this in red, actually. Let's use red. So in the Gaussian integral, we have i a p squared plus 2 i b p. So these kind of look the same. So p j, p j squared is going to be equal to p squared. And then p j is going to be equal to p. Right, so that means that A has to be equal to, let's see, minus delta over 2M. Because if we do that, that means that this is going to be the A. So what does B have to be? Well, we see here that we have 2IBP, right? 2IBP. So here we have the P. And here we have the I. So this means that 2B, 2B has to be Q dot delta. So that means that B is going to be Q dot delta divided by 2. So let's just copy this, paste it down here. This is just going to be equal to the square root of I pi over A e to the minus I B squared over A. Okay, so we have the A is this and B is this. So we just plug in those values in here. So what is pi divided by A? That's just going to be pi divided by minus delta over 2M. And that's just keep, change, and then flip. which gives us minus 2m pi 
divided by delta. So then what's b squared over a? So b squared divided by a is going to be b squared, so that's just going to be q dot squared delta squared over 4 divided by a, which we said was minus delta over 2m. So that's just going to be keep change and then flip so these cancel out to give us a 2 these cancel out as well and that just gives us m q dot squared delta over 2 yes minus cannot forget the minus minus one half m q dot squared delta so let's make a key to like sort of organize things because things are pretty messy right now. So here's the key. What we wanted to calculate was i pi over a and then minus i b squared over a. So let's make the key more nicer to see. So we, we wanted i pi over a and minus i b squared over a. So what, what we calculated was pi over a. We found out that pi over a is this over here. So i pi over a is going to be equal to minus 2i m pi over delta. And we have a minus i term here. So we are going to take the square root of i pi over a. And so we can't really take a square root of a well, we can, but if you have a negative i in the square root, that's pretty strange, right? So what we could do is we can use the identity minus i equals 1 over i. So this means that we can just write this as 2m pi over delta i because minus i is just 1 over i. So what's minus i b squared over a? What we calculated was b squared over a, and we found out that it's this over here. So minus b squared over a, minus i b squared over a, is just minus i times minus m q dot squared delta over 2. These cancel out to give us i m q dot squared delta over 2. And now we can take the formula, copy and paste. We can plug things in again. And, that, and this is just going to be equal to the square root of 2m pi divided by delta i times e to the i m q dot squared delta over two and th that that's our answer for this the weird square root e term so what we can do now is we can go all the way to the start we can copy this entire thing copy that and then paste and what we calculated was everything in the paint Everything in the pink we found out is just equal to the square root of 2m pi over delta i times e to the i m q dot square delta over 2 for the case of a, of a free particle, right? We can simplify this even more by noting that by noting that we still have the one over two pi term here, right? The one over two pi term. So what is one over two pi times the square root of two m pi over delta i? Well, this is just going to be two to the minus one pi to the minus one times two to the 
1 half, m to the 1 half, pi to the 1 half, over delta to the 1 half, i to the 1 half, right? So what's pi to the minus 1 times pi to the 1 half? Well, that's just pi to the minus 1 half. And then what is 2 to the minus 1 times 2 to the 1 half? Well, 2 to the minus 1 half. So this is, so this is just going to be the square root of uh, m over 2 pi delta i. So now we have that this is simplified all the way down to copy paste including the the 2 pi now all of this is just equal to the square root of m over 2 pi delta i times of course e to the i mq dot squared delta over 2 and yeah so we now have solved uh, the integral over the momentum. So yeah, what we did right is that we we distributed the, we distributed the delta, right? So we so we did that, and now our answer is if we were to write the entire thing. So now we have this over here. So. We can do the same shtick as before. We can uh, let n approach infinity, which means that delta approaches zero. And that actually is a, a weird thing. It, it makes the this term, it makes the term delta this, it makes that term just become an integral over time, right? Since this delta is just t over n, right? What we're doing is that we're multiplying this, right? We are multiplying this like t over n times like t over n, like multiple times up to n minus one. And we're starting at j equals zero. So this, and we're letting n approach infinity. So that makes a t over n term just become a dt term. And that makes the, um, this like, I don't know the technical name for it. I call it a power sum. I don't know why, but it's it's a it's like the multiplication analog for a summation, but that just turns that into an, an integrand, an integral sign. So this so this just becomes del uh, the integral over dt, right? And then of course, q dot is like still q dot, right? And then we can move this constant to the front as well. And that gives us the probability that we go from A to B in time T is equal to the integral over the power sum dqj. Oops, we already forgot to add the coefficient in front. We have to add the square root over m over 2 pi delta i. Most people don't write this root in textbooks. I don't know why. They just like to use the good old parentheses thing. And they just do the 1 half like that. But remember that we have a delta in there, right? So what we'd actually have to do, if I'm remembering correctly, well, I am remembering correctly. What we have to actually do is do n divided by 2. Since this delta is t over n, right? So we'd have to do n over 2 uh, since we're technically still summing over n. So we have to put in an n over here. Again, the reason is that we are... This is a, this is a, multiplica a mul multiplication thing. So we're repeating our multiplication. And every time we repeat the, multi the multiplication, you're going to pick up a, 
square one half of this term, right? So it's just so every time we repeat it n minus one times, we can just write that out as the whole thing raised to the n, which is just going to be this over here. So let me write it out in a more neater fashion. This is going to be m over 2 pi i delta n over 2 times this integral over here and then times e to the i integral over dt m q dot squared over 2. Okay, and you guys might be saying, oh, we have a delta dt m q dot squared over 2 term. That's just the action for a free particle, right? That's the action. If you guys don't know what the action is, I made a video it's called an, int an introduction to Log Lagrangian mechanics, which I talked briefly about the action. But this term is just, is just the action for a free particle. So we can just write this out as m over 2 pi i delta to the 1 half times the integral j equals 1 n minus 1 dq j e to the i times the action. And most people like to write this out as a constant n. So you might see, see that in textbooks. So if you ever see like a big bolded n, that's what it stands for. And a lot of people like to to so, so simplify this even more and define something called the path integral measure dq of t. We have an of t since these paths depend on time. Or dq of t is defined as being this times, oops, this should be an n of, by the way, so times m over 2 pi i delta to the n over 2. And that simplifies this, this equation even more to give us our probability that we travel from a to b in time t. It's just the integral over the path integral measure times e to the i s. And if you just Google path integral right now, chances are you're going to see this. So this is our final form for the path integral. It looks much simpler compared to the ugly thing that we had to start with, right? It looks much simpler. So what we did was we just integrated over the momentum and we did some notational things. This is called the I'm going to say it again. This is called the path integral measure. If you guys want to learn more about that, it's a functional since Q uh, is a function of T. It's kind of like DQ, but we use a curly D since we want to capture that we're scaling by the N constant. And then we have a repeated multiplication of the differential uh, QJs. So yeah, here is our path integral. We can like frame it, uh, like put like a crown on it to signify that this is our final form. And we are pretty much done here. Um, we would solve this path integral to find that probability amplitude. Now, you guys might be saying, hey, wait a second. This is only true for the case of a free particle since we used the action for a free particle. But it turns out that this holds like even though, though, though we derive this by using the action for a free particle, it's the exact same form for an, an action with a non-zero potential. I guess might ask, okay, how do we prove that? And we have to use what's called the Trotter product. Yeah, where we have, it's something where you have like e to the a times e to the b, it's equal to the e to the um, a times b over n to the n, where you take like the limit. 
sorry, wait, let me I'm trying to remember remember what it's it's like e to the yeah a over n so just like a plus b over n. I think it's just a plus b over n to the n and take the limit as n approaches infinity. That's called the Trotter product. And we'd use that for the case of a non-zero momentum. Sorry, non-zero potential. I don't want to cover that because I feel like it's just much more extra work just to, you know, it's a lot more extra work to get the same result, but it's much more satisfying since we only derive this for the free particle. But we can use the Trotter product to just add in a potential and we get the exact same answer. I won't cover that because um, it's much more added complexity that I just don't want to add. So I encourage you guys to look up the Trotter product uh, to, and like how to drive a path integral for a non-zero potential energy. I'm, I'm also partly not covering because I don't fully understand it. So I don't want to cover something that I don't really fully understand yet. But yeah, this this is our path integral and we are done here. Um, I might make some more videos on how to solve this path integral for the harmonic oscillator and um, the free particle, maybe even the hydrogen atom to, just, just to troll, a, troll a little bit. But I'm not completely sure if I'm gonna make this video soon, but we'll see. Um, tell me guys, just tell me like if you want more videos on like path integral for quantum mechanical systems. I will make videos on path integral for quantum field theory once we hit our non-perturbative phenomena series on quantum field theory. But that's for way in the future. So this is it. We are done. I might make a couple more videos on the path integral. Not fully sure yet. We'll see. But thanks for watching and have an amazing day. Bye.